Okay, so this is going to be a three-parter. My phone messed up during the recording of part two. Um, to finish that out, there should be a righteous indignation um, when people come against your ministry, when people come against the idea of ministry, when people come against the things of God with the intent to mock. Excuse me. But you should never come at that person directly. They can be an incredibly intelligent person and just be saying something stupid. So you shouldn't come at them like they're an idiot, but you should come at what they're saying and be like, look, man, that's wrong of you to say. Like, if you believe that, that's fine. But, you know, out of respect for me, I'd ask that you don't say things like that in the future. You can come at what they're saying with righteous indignation without coming at them and making it a big stink. Um... Now, if they just continue to be obstinate, um, your best bet is to just walk away uh, from that because they don't respect you and they don't respect what you believe or how you feel about it. Um, and they're just going to continue mocking. And eventually, your righteous indignation will cease to be righteous. And if it was me, I'd probably want to hit the person in the face and... It probably wouldn't stop at one. Um, thank God that I have, over the years, learned the self-control to walk away and not just assault somebody. But we are all human. We all have flesh. Typically, uh, when you get to that point of anger, acts of violence are like the first thing you want to go to. Um, and that does not work the righteousness of God. Um... I can't really say too much more about that um, beyond what I have already said. Um, so we're going to move on to Colossians uh, 4 and verse 6. Um, I will say, I'm turning the wrong way. Uh, I will say that power company. Um, can't do two things at once I will say that <laughs> um, I will say that acts of violence are unbecoming of a Christian um, we just shouldn't act violently it paints us in a bad light it paints Christianity in a bad light um, there's a guy at work I don't know if I would call him agnostic or if he's like loosely Christian. He's kind of said, but I haven't really um, gotten a handle so much on what he believes specifically. Um, I've, I've asked and he just kind of dodges around it, doesn't want to talk about it. So I've just left it at that um, because eventually working together a door will probably open. Uh, for me to kind of talk to him about that, you know, and it's just maybe it's not something he's comfortable talking about. I'm kind of new in the department I'm in, uh, so on and so forth, um, you know. So some of those things take time, but um, going forward, um, ultimately, there is a way we should conduct ourselves as Christians. And I've given you what not to do. So this is kind of now going forward. Hey, this is what you should be doing. And I've, I've made statements, but I want to look at what the Bible says, what the Apostle Paul wrote. Um, something God revealed to him, obviously. Since unlike the other apostles, he didn't really walk and travel with Christ for the three and a half years of Christ's ministry. Um, he met Jesus in a vision on the road to Damascus. Uh, lost his sight, had a very radical conversion, got his sight back, relearned everything he knew through the lens of the gospel, and became the minister to the Gentiles, um, possibly the greatest theologian that ever lived, one of the greatest men of God that have ever lived, um, according to theological history, for lack of a better way to say that. I don't know what you'd call that. I mean, it's history, but it's history relating to the study of the Bible, so theological history, I guess, is applicable. Um, I'll read verse 5 as well. Well, you know what? 
I'm going to go all the way back to Colossians 4, verse 2. Uh, Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving, with all praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak, walk in wisdom toward them who are without, redeeming the time. And this is really the crux. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. Um, so right there, we see that there is a way as Christians we should be walking and we should be interacting with people. Um, our conversation should always be seasoned with salt. That you may know how you ought to answer every man. Um, the way you talk, the way you conduct yourself, the way you present your arguments, or, or the way you present your viewpoint, um, so on and so forth, should always be seasoned with salt. It should always be you yielding your tongue to God so that He can speak through you. Um, it should always... be as free of strong language as you can make it, I think. Um, when I say strong language, I mean angry words, cuss words, things like that. Um, those words aren't full of grace. That's not conversing always with grace, seasoned with salt. Um, we should always be trying to point people back to the Bible um, in these arguments in these discussions and these debates and like I said if you go on to their social media to debate them like look I'm a Christian I believe in what the Bible says this is what the Bible says regarding this I didn't come to argue I'm just throwing that out there you all have a nice day and then you just have nothing else to do with it that's not to say maybe you don't monitor the comments and just look at what people are saying back um, Sometimes they'll ask questions. Sometimes they'll, well, why do you believe that? Or where do you get that interpretation from? Sometimes there is civil discourse that happens. But you can determine very quickly, oh, this is just going to be a mud flinging contest. I've put what I believe out there, and now I'm done. Um, because you don't want to get involved with that. You want to be that, that salt and that light. Um, you know, and, and the reality is, if, if you're trying to argue... You're not being salt and light. Jesus says regarding the Pharisees, and I'll just read it. It's in Matthew 6, uh, verse 5. And when you pray, you shall not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have received their reward. So if I go on to Facebook and I'm, oh, this guy's an atheist. Oh, this guy's an unbeliever. Oh, this guy's politically left. I'm going to beat him over the head with a stick. Who are you doing that for? Are you hoping that your fellow Christians are going to come alongside you and, good job, man, you've really out-argued that guy? Because that's the only reward you're going to get for that. I know this passage talks about prayer, but these men are praying to be seen. They're like, look at us praying. Look at us. We're so godly. And that idea is still applicable. Who are you wanting to congratulate you for that? Because God in heaven is not going to congratulate you for that. And that's not to say you can't take a stand for your faith on things like social media. That's not to say you can't be vocal about what you believe on the platforms that you occupy. I think you should. But taking that stand and doing it pharisaically, like the hypocrites here mentioned, the rulers of the synagogues, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the whateveries, um... They were doing it to be seen. They weren't doing it to be right with God. They were doing it to be seen. And you can take a stand to be right with God, or you can take a stand to be seen, but you can't take a stand for both. Because if you're taking a stand to be seen, you're kind of putting a barrier between being right with God. Because at that point, you're saying, look at how great I am. Look at how good of a Christian I am. Look at me. Look at me. And you're robbing glory from God, and God doesn't stand for that. Um, the Bible is very plain. To God be the glory. And so if I'm taking God's glory, God's not going to go for that. So I'll double back down on what Paul said in Colossians. 
about letting your communication always be gracious, always be seasoned with salt. As a Christian, that's how you should be living. I shouldn't be going on to an argument to argue. If I go to present my side, I present my side and I leave it at that. Because bickering back and forth, as I said in part one and a little bit in part two, because this is part three, um, it does no one any good. Um, so that's just something for you all to think about. Um, I'm going to keep my Facebook active to promote this YouTube channel. Um, I've got a couple things in the pipeline. Um, people that have brought up ideas for future videos, um, a couple friends that do podcasts that maybe want to do some collab stuff, um, just kind of work out time frames for all that. Um, as I said in the in initial intro, I'm trying to be yielded unto God with this, um, and, and talking on the things God gives me to talk on, um, but there is... There's some, some neat stuff um, maybe that God's opening the doors for going forward. Uh, I really hope so because, like I said in the beginning, ultimately I want this to grow and not just be me every week um, just throwing my thoughts at you because there's a lot of stuff I've said, but maybe somebody else could take what I've said and build off of it, and then the teaching just expounds and expounds and expounds. And so ultimately, eventually, that's what I want to progress towards. Um, still working on how to do that, still seeking the Lord on how to grow this uh, into that. Maybe ultimately that doesn't happen and it's still just me. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to follow God on this. This is something that the Lord's laid on my heart for a while and I finally quit dragging my heels about it, uh, which is hard for me to do if you know me because I am the chief procrastinator and I'm not proud of that, but it is who I am. Uh, I try to be better about that daily, but sometimes... Um, years of living a certain way gets the better of me um, but anyway um, that's it for this one it was three parts due to technical difficulties I guess uh, thank you, God bless you uh, you all have a good 4th of July